Hey, coaches, Joe Salas here. Got a special guest with us today, Chris Knapper from the great state of West Virginia. Uh, Chris is uh, one of the best wide receiver guys I've, I've ever met. Chris worked with Matt Mummy at LaGrange College, and so he's worked at the college level. He's been a, a, an offensive coordinator at the high school level uh, multiple places, one day hopefully in North Carolina with me. Uh, he, is, uh, he has officially got guru status. I put – uh, Chris and Shane Doolar both are in my uh, my guru status guys because they're just uh, elite uh, elite details, elite knowledge of the air raid, and I always learn something when I when I uh, when I watch him speak. I've I've seen Chris speak multiple times, and he's going to share uh, wide receiver play today, which he's an expert on. So I'm excited. Chris, take it away, man. All right, Coach. I appreciate the kind words, man. I'm excited to be on your channel. I Big fan of it, you know that. So I think a lot of you and Shane and George and, and Drew Piscopo. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, Coach, and we'll start getting into some of this wide receiver play. We'll put it on uh, presenter mode here if I remember how to do it. There it is. Can you see that okay, Coach? Yep, perfect. All right, brother. Okay, guys, uh, that's me there. Today we're going to be covering the intro to Air Raid Wide Receiver Drills and Skills. And uh, if you guys want to get a hold of me, I went ahead and put my Twitter on there. It's probably the easiest way to get a hold of me. Um, we're going to go ahead and move forward here. Uh, real fast, we're going to talk about the Air Raid philosophy because I think it really ties into wide receivers. Uh, on the left there is Joe, Coach South's uh, former boss, uh, Hal Mummy. Uh, he is the originator of the Air Raid. I know you guys that follow the channel know that. But, uh, you know, Coach Mummy's big thing, and I'm sure he told Coach Salas this when he was with him, is you want to throw the ball quick to people who can short – or throw the ball quick and short to people who can score. Uh, once the defense starts taking that away, you want to throw the ball deep to those same people. And then, of course, once everybody's out of the box, you want to run it. And, that, you know, there's a lot of genius to that. You're going to see a lot of that in the wide receiver play and the drills that we're covering. Um, the fourth thing that I think you really need to talk about is playing the game before the game. Uh, you know, me and Coach South were joking earlier. It seems like I'm always covering quick game and scripting. Uh, but, you know, that stuff really does go well into the offense. And, uh, you know, you might want to check that out. So just kind of an overview of the air raid offense, uh, the philosophy. Uh, but today we're getting into meat and potatoes of uh, coach and wide receivers in the air raid offense. Okay, on the left-hand side there, i got a little picture of pack and go drill. Um, you know, you don't need a lot of room. In order to run the air raid, a lot of people think you got to take two football fields up. Guys, I've been at schools where we've done it on a baseball field, you know, and I'm sure Coach South can tell you he's been places where they might have 50 yards of practice. Um, but, you know, it goes into the details. Um, I'm really excited about some things we're talking about. Uh, there is a major difference in the air raid offense when it comes to outside wide receivers and inside wide receivers. You know, our outside wide receivers, what me and Coach South call the X and the Z, and the inside guys are the Y and the H. Um, that's a that's a tale of two cities. You know, those X and Zs do some different things, and the Ys and Hs do some different things. Um, I'm a big believer that routes are ran off steps, not yards. What I try to tell them is, you know, nine times out of ten, that, that route is a rhythm. It's not a race, okay? Because, you know, there's certain times that the quarterback's going to look at you, and we need to count our steps off accordingly to know when he's going to be looking at us for us to get open. Um, you don't have to have – uh, the most fanciest equipment to coach wide receivers in the air raid. You don't have to have 100 kids. Um, I've been able to utilize what I have. Uh, the big one that I like to use is this this foam bat I've got here. This is the famous foam bat of Chris Snapper. That helps teach his releases because I got tired of them beating my arms to death. I've used tennis balls. I've used towels, and I've used PVC pipe. Okay, I've you know I've engineered things to to work that way. Um, I'm excited about this. I've got three new videos coming out on Coach Tube, and me and Coach South talked a little earlier. I can put once those are finished, I'll put them in the comment section. Um, but it's going to talk about the outside wide receiver play and the details of the routes and the skills that I think that are important for outside receivers. I'm going to make another one for the inside receivers, and then a third one. I'm going to do uh, some drills and stuff, some neat things that you might not been able to see before that has to do with the wide receivers, like using the foam bat, the tennis balls, and the towels. Uh, some kind of some universal things that we're going to talk about, and you guys are on the uh, Coach Salas' page here. Uh, if you have ever seen his kids play, they are always in a good stance. I commented on Twitter one time. He did a, a run video, and you couldn't tell that they were running the ball. 
every one of his wide receivers were in a great stance at the sign of a good coach. Uh, so just real fast covering the stance. Um, you want a good low helmet. Okay, my coach on the right there, his helmet's down. He's, you know, I would rather him be looking at the football. You know, um, one thing that I do with the wide receivers in all my drills, I don't go off the of sound, I go off the of foot movement. And that foot represents the ball. Okay, so I can be screaming down, say, hit, hut, go, uh, let's go, whatever. But they know not to do the drill till I move my foot. That way I'm training their eyes to look at the ball all the time. So we're completely silent when it comes to drills with wide receivers. Um, I want their hands up you know, ready to fight. If me and Coach South were going to get in a fist fight and my hands are hanging down by my side, he's going to punch me right in the face. Okay, so I need to have my hands up for combat. I need to put my feet in my armpit. A lot of times you'll see wide receivers like the guy here on the left, he's got his back foot hanging off the ground. Um, that makes him unstable. It's no different than a lineman, right? I shouldn't be able to go by and shove a wide receiver and knock him off balance. I need his feet in his armpit. That gives him a good width. Um, and like I said, I need his eyes on the ball, and I need his knee and nose over his toe, okay? Uh, I don't want him standing straight up, and I don't want him in like a, almost like a crouched position where they're laying on the ground. I need him in an athletic stance. Here's an example of a perfect stance. Uh, this is a wide receiver at Alabama, so obviously he's going to be pretty good. Uh, his hands are up. I love his feet position. He's got his foot is slightly tilted in. I'm a big believer in that, and I have no scientific proof to why this works, but I've always told my wide receivers, I don't know if it's just because they believe me or not, um, I tell them they can't fall step when they do it, and they, and they don't. Uh, you know, he's got a slight bend in his elbows, and it helps him eliminate his, uh, his false steps there. So, but I really like his eyes, Coach, how his eyes are down there looking at the, the ball for the snap. Okay, now we're going to get into – uh, the differences in inside receivers and outside receivers and when it comes to the line. Uh, I've got a picture here of Washington State. As everybody knows, Coach Leach is the man when it comes to the air raid. Uh, he, he's beyond guru status. He's on the Mount Rushmore of air raid coaches. Uh, but as you notice here, the H and Y, that's the inside receivers. Their outside foot is up. And that is very important because when you're teaching routes off steps, it, it times up better that way. It also allows them to get there on mesh quicker because they, you know, their feet are already opened up. They can step with an inside foot. Um, one thing that a lot of high school coaches don't talk about is the receiver that's off the football, you don't want him like three, five yards deep into the backfield. You want to tell that receiver to put his uh, front foot on the back foot of the receiver that's on the ball. So if you notice here, the receivers that are off, which would be the Z and the H and the air A, they're actually really close to the line of scrimmage. Okay, so if you, if you put on a tape and you notice your slot receivers or whichever receivers are off the ball, if they're real deep, they're cheating their self off yards and it's going to mess with your steps. So, you know, you can always tell a good coach team by their stances and their alignments. The X and the Z, which are our outside wide receivers, you want their inside feet on the ball. Okay, eyes looking into the quarterback. Obviously, they're going to adjust. All these receivers are going to adjust according to what hash you're on. Um, if you notice here, I, I did this picture on purpose. They're on the right hash. So, obviously, the X there, the receiver at the bottom of the screen, he's not quite on the numbers. He's cheating a little bit. Same thing with the H there. He's cheating in. And then with our X and Z on the top of the numbers there, uh, he can't be on the sidelines because that's where the quarterback goes. So, he's, you know, in the numbers. And then the Y, he, he's kind of playing halfway in the middle. So, you're going to have to work with that when it comes to hash. Okay, releases. Very important. And uh, Coach Salas can tell you this. If you run the air raid offense, somebody's answer is going to be to press you. They're going to try to take away the short throws. That's rule number one in the air raid. We're throwing hitches, Randy's and Larry's, stick, you name it, out route. So we're trying to throw the ball quick for multiple reasons. Well, they're going to get smart. They're going to come up and try to press you, especially if you're running RPOs. A lot of people's answer to RPOs is play cover one, some type of man coverage. Okay, so you have to get good at these releases. Um, foot fire. We do a lot of it. It's used in settle and news drill. And we're going to show a drill on that. Uh, how do you foot fire? I like to tell my guys fast hands, fast feet. Try to tell them to outrun their hands. Uh, a little key word that I've used in the past that they really like is hot grass. You know, you'll see their feet going real fast pitter pattern. It's kind of like when you're on the beach and you're trying to get there and the sand's real hot and trying to pick your feet up real fast. So I tell them hot grass, just trying to stomp the grass out. Um, you know, use the knife. What is the knife? <clears throat> the knife is your hand. 
if I'm in a knife fight, I want to drag that knife over somebody's forearm to cut them, right? I don't want to take this big wide swing at a knife because if I take a big wide swing at a knife, they're going to block my hand. If somebody knows combat. I got to be precise in and out. So I'm dragging that knife across their forearm when it comes to release. The high arm and the low arm comes off of the foam bat. And I don't know if you guys can see me here, but I've got a little blue foam bat. And this is the most valuable tool that I can use with my wide receivers. Um, I want them getting the defender's hands off of me, okay? As a wide receiver coach, and I might be the only one that says this, I don't believe in defensive pass interference. If they're grabbing me, that's my fault, okay? I need to get their hands off of me. Nothing in the rule of football says that I should allow the defensive back to grab me. We play football for a reason. We like to be physical. If they're grabbing me, I'm going to punch them, right? I tell them, treat yourself like you would your sister or your mom. I'm not going to let some, somebody grab my mom or my sister. I'm going to put my hands on them, right? So that's where I'm using that high arm and low arm with that bat to depend. That way I'm simulating a defender. They can smack it off of me. Uh, and that's some wisdom, guys. I used to just use my hand, and I got tired of my arms getting bruised all the time, so I bought that little foam bat from Dollar General. It's been worth every penny. Um, you know, and then the last thing is listening to your shoulder pad. What that refers to is sticking the route. And what I tell them is you want to see that little head lean, and I tell them to put their ear to their shoulder. It just kind of gives them that visual of listening to their shoulder pad once they stick so you see that head knock. Okay, so I've got some video here, Coach. Uh, it's going to show them what, if somebody's never seen foot fire, what it looks like. Um, you don't have to use cones for this. You can use tennis balls or cups or whatever you got. But here's a release. So he's working a high arm, low arm right here. Foot fire, his hands, trying to run his hands. He's doing a low arm there, releasing up. Now, you don't want a big swim move. Okay, if you swim, you're exposing your shoulders or your chest to the uh, defender. So you want to make sure you're tight and you want to rip across his arm with that knife. Okay, so you're cutting that forearm. I don't want to do a big swim because if I open my chest up, he's going to he's gonna nail me right in the chest. Uh, the trick to this is they got to win on top. So once they get past that defender there, they need to get on top of him and make him chase. Just like you see there, and that defender's chasing him now. Here's another one, good foot fire. Listen to his shoulder pad. Run that. Out. Okay, let's see if I can pull it up here. Here's one that you can use with tennis balls or cones. This is a foot fire drill. Right here, you're going to see the hot feet, hot grass sticking it inside, outside. Try to outrun your hands, okay? These are from Texas Tech. These are really good athletes. Your guys will not look this good when they first do it. Uh, but if you work this every day, you'll see it. Coach, I started incorporating this into my settle up and noose drill. Okay, because used to, we just used to have the receiver jog to that one cone and jog back and show the noose. I started putting tennis balls down, and they started doing these little fat, fast hands, fast feet drills and sticking it till they got to the middle cone, and then they would show their hand. Is that going to be – are you going to have film on that on your uh, Coach Tube course? Yes, sir. I finally got my film for it. Uh, but I, So I can put that on my Coach Tube course for them. Here's what it would look like, Coach, uh, as a drawing, just so they can see it. And I know Coach South can tell you this. The two most important drills that you do all day is settle a noose drill and pat and go. Everything that we do in the air raid offense is based off of these two drills. Coach Hatcher calls it perfect drill. He even renamed it. Okay. Now, what's different in mine, so this is the Hillbilly edition, the West Virginia edition, is what I was telling Coach earlier is I've started to put those little tennis balls or little tiny cones and, and I started incorporating the 45-degree cuts off of them, okay? So if you remember, you was watching Texas Tech. They was doing fast hands, fast feet to those little cones. We're going to do that till we get to the trash can in the middle. That trash can represents a defender, okay? So they know that they're, they're pivoting off that linebacker. Now, some of the stuff that you want to emphasize when you're doing this drill is I've got wide receiver one here, so he'd be the receiver uh, doing the drill. Wide receiver two is representing the defender. So I'm allowed to work the release and I'm stacking him. I'm doing my 45 degree uh, foot fire drills. I'm sticking once I get to this middle cone or this middle trash can and I'm showing the quarterback my noose. I tell the receivers to shorten the throw to the quarterback, okay? So they need to extend their hands all the way out and make the U or the diamond or the, U, uh, the noose, whatever you want to call it, 
<clears throat> that way it's making the throw shorter, okay? Because defenders will try to run through your hands, and if you're trying to body the catch, you're not going to get P.I. called. They need to run through your hands to get P.I. <clears throat> so with that said, I tell them that as soon as they catch it, they need to tight turn. That's the most important part of this drill is tight turn. What does tight turn mean? That means that your hind end needs to get to the end zone, okay? Don't dance east and west. I want you going north and south. So they're going to, as soon as they catch the ball, they're going to dip that inside shoulder away from the defender and get vertical. Good ball control, high and tight. I'm screaming that the entire time on the drill. And if you notice here, I've got me drawing in this drill where it says nap. Oh, it disappeared on me. It says nap right here, okay? That's me. So I'm watching this entire drill. They have to score past me. So I give them a visual line with that dotted line there, and they are practice scoring. They're not going to jog past me. They're going to sprint past me and visualize the scoring, okay? So there's a lot of stuff going on in this drill. Um, it looks like pandemonium the first time you're doing it because you got quarterbacks and people snapping and everything. And uh, Coach South can, you know, tell you what's going on with those guys later with the quarterbacks and the centers during this drill. But there's just a lot of stuff going on during this drill. Here's a visual of what it looks like. This is ECU when Coach Riley was there. Um, so, they're, you know, they're not doing the 45-degree cone with it, but you can kind of get a visual of what one would look like. Blowing up here, okay. So he's working his release. Now, this is what I didn't like about the drill, Coach South. See how he's jogging there? That just seemed lazy to me during that drill, okay? So that's why I started adding in those 45-degree cone cuts, and it was just a way I could get the time in. Um, what I do like about this is their stick, and I like how they work back to the quarterback and shorten the throw. See how he shortens the throw right here where he works back to the quarterback? I like that. You know, he's got his hands all the way out, then he tight turns and scores. So, you know, I would be back there behind those guys. As soon as, I, as soon as they catch the ball, they say, I'd say, tight turn. Right here, boom, tight turn. So then they're working high and tight and getting past them. And, of course, there's a picture of the quarterbacks doing their stuff uh, on that drill as well. Okay, so the next important in drill we have, pat and go. Uh, why is this drill so important? Because it emphasizes a lot of what we do as outside wide receivers and inside wide receiver too a little bit. But the whole offense for me, when it comes to X and Z, is built off of this drill, pat and go, okay? Uh, Coach Salas can tell you in the air raid, everything is built off of six, which is four verticals. And this emphasizes that drill. It's teaching them grass. It's teaching them releases. It's teaching them how to stack, how to, you know, catch the football on the hard catches, okay? Um, so what you would do is, you know, to me, I start off this drill going three, four speed and work it into full. But I want the wide receivers practicing catching the hard ball. What is the hard ball? Me and Coach Salas played wide receiver. That's the ball that's coming over your shoulder. You know, if everybody can think of this, the Randy Moss catch. You know, right? He's running down the field, and it's the over-the-shoulder catch, okay? If you can make that catch in football, you can make any catch. Uh, the keys to catching that is you tell them to put their chin on the football. A lot of people will say, you know, put your eyes on the ball. Listen, you can look to the left and not move your head, right? So I can be looking at the ball and my head's not moved. My eyes aren't really on the ball. If you move your chin, wherever your chin goes, your eyes go. So I tell them to put their chin on the football, and you'll see that head snap, right? Because that's what we're wanting to see in this drill, their head going and snapping over the top, okay? Um, so here we got, we got the picture here with the quarterback. And uh, I used to do this with centers. I'll tell you some wisdom here in a second why I don't do it anymore with centers. But so we got receiver two here. He's simulating the defender. Um, and you're going to release. You can work an inside release or an outside release. Here's the trick on the release. <clears throat> you want them to stack the defender. They got to win on top. That way he goes into chase mode. Now, I've got the numbers drawn up on the field on purpose. We do not own property from the sidelines to the numbers. That is the quarterback's property. Okay, what I tell them is we cannot trespass as wide receivers. We cannot trespass into that area until the quarterback invites us in there. So he's got to throw us into that area. So once you're running go routes with these outside receivers, you want to stack and get on top of the numbers. Okay, because we don't have Joe Montana. We don't have Dan Marino. Okay, he can't throw that ball in there with about two foot space. All right, we need the quarterback to throw us into that grass on go routes. So if they're running these go routes, you know, Within the sidelines, the inside of the numbers, they're wrong. You want them stacked and releasing on top of the numbers. 
okay? And this doesn't have to be a bomb, all right? Uh, you can throw this at 15 yards, 20 yards. Uh, Coach South will tell you this. He's coached wide receivers long enough. You never have to look at a wide receiver and beg him and say, hey, man, I really want you to run that deep route, run a go around. Okay, they all want to run go routes, all right? So when you first start this drill, you can do pat and go short. You can work your slant. I know Coach South is real big on a slant shoot combination. So you can work that slant route to get your quarterback's arm loose. Uh, but then, you know, as the drill goes on, you do want them running that go route to where they're putting their chin on the ball, snapping their head and catching it. All right, now here's the wisdom. I've almost forgotten this is the most important part of this drill. You want the receivers <clears throat> to practice high and tight after they catch it through the whole drill. They need to run to that cone that's in front of that quarterback high and tight the entire time. If they don't, if they're running around with the ball like this, they're not doing the drill right. High and tight and take a knee in front of the quarterback, and they're going to snap the ball to the quarterback. And I know Coach Salas might laugh over this because he's done it long enough, but the first time that you do pat and go with your guys, there's going to be a 1,000 balls thrown everywhere if you don't do it this way. They're going to throw 15 footballs at the quarterback during this drill. I know Coach has probably seen it. They're everywhere, and you're yelling at them. Don't throw the ball. Set it down. So the easiest way to do this is to have them practice being high and tight, good ball security, all the way to the quarterback. Take a knee. He'll tell you when to snap it. You snap it to him, then you get another line. And it just really cleans up the drill for you. Okay, how does this drill look on film? This is also ECU doing this. So you're going to see them working their releases, and they're going to stay on top of the numbers, and they look up, not back for the ball, okay? If I'm running a race, I'm not looking backwards to see the guys behind me. I'm looking at my eyes on the prize. So I tell them, look up, not back. Okay, now, if you notice, you see the coach up here on the top near the 20. I would usually be there around the 30, and I'd have my phone back, and I would teach them to high arm and low arm that phone back while they're running that go route. Okay, so that's teaching them to look up while using their hands and doing it. And then the quarterback's going to fade us to the sidelines. Okay, so we're working foot fire, working releases, we're working stacking, we're working high arm, low arm, we're working on catching the football, and we're working ball security, and we're working discipline all during this one drill. Okay, so there's a lot going on during that drill. Uh, last thing we'll cover today, Coach, is stock blocking and fast screens. Um, I went to a clinic several years ago. It was a rules clinic. We have to do that in West Virginia where all the officials are there. And, you know, I kept getting called for penalties. You know, and, and I asked one of the refs, I said, hey, my guys keep getting called for holds. What do you guys look at when, when you're calling holds? Um, and and he, he was the head official. He looked straight at me and he said, listen, hands do not get holding penalties. Feet do. And what he was talking about is, you know, obviously it's the same – for every wide receiver coach, because it's really the only way you can do it. You know, you want your elbows in tight. You want your belt on his belt. <clears throat> Low man wins. You hear all that stuff all the time. Run your feet. But what he was talking about is it's not your hands inside when they grab the chest plate that gets you the hold. It's when their feet go dead and they're not buzzing their feet and they turn their bodies when that defender makes a move. So they, the, the refs see that you holding on and they see your arms go to the side. As long as your feet are buzzing and you're keeping him in front of you, they're not going to get a holding penalty. So basically what that comes down to is hands don't get holding penalties, feet do. So I'm teaching them, hey, buzz your feet. Hot grass while you're blocking, right? Chop your feet. We do it all the time anyways. You might as well utilize it during blocking, okay? And then, of course, the other things we talked about, elbows tight, belt on belt, low man wins, strike inside, get physical. I got to teach you how to be nasty, right? Uh, but – here, here's the key for wide receiver play when it comes to blocking and really on everything, but you need to protect the reception area, okay? I want you to go flat and win the outside block. Never in the history of football has anyone ever caught an ISO play and not told the running back where to run the football, okay? You know, they give him a whole designation. So it's the same thing when we're out there throwing Randy and Larry screens, right? i got to give them an area to protect. I can't just say, hey, go out there and block that thing, all right? And I'm going to show you guys what the reception area is, okay? And then as a wide receiver, when we're talking Randy and Larry screens, and I'm sure Coach South is the same way, I only allow them to do one cut. And that one cut is this. I tell them, it's all, you run it, you always go outside until you can't. So that defender is 
doing everything he can to keep you from outside. You're allowed to cut inside of him, get vertical, and then get back outside, right? Because all the bad guys are inside on Randy and Larry's screens. We need to get out there and set the edge, all right? What that does is that allows my blockers to know what part of the defender they need to block. My receiver is running outside, so I need to tack his outside shoulder and clear that lane up. If not, I'm going to shove him out of bounds. Uh, Coach Piscopo at Ash County has been nice enough to let me use his film. Uh, Coach South can tell you Drew's the man. He, he does a good job down there running the air raid. So I'm using his clips to show you what some of this stuff would look like. I may have to mute it because sometimes it gets loud on here for some reason. I ain't going to do it this time. That's good. Maybe. Uh, oh, there it is. So anyway, Coach, uh, let me mute this real fast here. If I can. Hang ain't going to mute it. We'll just have to hear it through it. Okay. So we'll rewind this real fast. Okay, the reception area. Here's the reception area. The reception area is the outside foot of this wide receiver here. Okay? Now, what this does is this gives this quarterback a consistent throwing target. Okay, so if I'm running a Randy and Larry out here to the X and Z, this is the base. This is what I got to protect is his outside foot. So if I'm this inside defender, I need to come flat for five. I don't need to run where he is. I need to run to where he's going to be. I need to come flat and then protect this reception area. So whoever shows up here first, I've got to block their outside shoulder because this receiver is getting outside until he can. Same thing here. If I'm throwing the fast screen to the uh, X up here, the reception area is his outside foot. Now, here's where it translates to the inside receiver. Let's say that you're running uh, a Randy and Larry to that number two guy or the number three guy, the inside receiver. That reception area is the same area. Okay, so I need to run an arc screen, what we used to call an air raid, a bubble or an arc or whatever. He needs to get outside here, okay, to that same area. So it's the same throw for the quarterback. And these outside wide receivers know that what area they've got to protect. Okay, so as you see here, I'm going to – oh, it started the whole thing over, Coach. <laughs> Let me see if I can get back up here. Okay, so you see here, he's going to throw to this receiver down here at the bottom. It's going to show the reception area. Hey, go on, I'm having all kinds of difficulties. Sorry about that, Coach Dallas. I'm just going to let it run through. But as you can see, he's thrown down here to the bottom. This inside receiver is going to protect the reception area. Fast hands, fast feet, catch it, get vertical. Now, see there, he took away the outside, so he had to cut in. That's a three-yard game. Okay, same thing here. Coach Piscopo sees cushion on the top. He's going to throw the Larry. Reception area gets outside, then back in. It's a gain of five. We're going to take that all day. And I know Coach Salas has talked about this before. Those fast screens make the defense line up right. Okay, they can't cheat. And it makes those D linemen tired because they got to run all the way to the sideline and back, and all the way to the sideline and back. So here he gets back outside. It's a good game. Okay, Coach, that's pretty much all I got today with that stuff. Awesome, like always, man. When uh, Now that we got the screen on you, go ahead and show them your, uh, your phone bat. I don't know if they could see that before. Here's the phone bat, guys. This is the legendary uh, $3. As you can tell, it's been beat to death, but this used to be my forearm. But this is the legendary phone bat. And, Coach, I'll show them real quick. Uh, what I was talking about with high arm, low arm. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll put this bat on them, on their shoulder or on their hip, okay? And if it's on my shoulder, that would be a high arm. If it's on my hip, that would be a low arm. This is stimulating the defender's arm. So if it's up here on the shoulder, I'm just gonna take my hand, this inside hand, smack the bat off of it as I'm running my route. So I'm pumping my arms, if the bat's up here, boom, I'm getting it off. 
if it's down here, they're coming through with that knife. Boom, you're getting it off of it. But, you know, you guys, you can get these backs wherever. But uh, this yeah. definitely saved my forearm and uh, a lot of bruises in my life. So you're you're talking about this, you're using that primarily for like in phase, you know, as they're while they're running down the field and the guys harassing them, they're getting a hand off of them. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And, you know, you can like if I'm if it's just me there, if I don't have a lot of kids, I can use this for release drill, you know, to simulate a hand. Um, but I, I kind of want the other receivers feeling what it like to have a DB on you with your hand. But absolutely, this is more like for the harass phase because it's kind of like the old Mike Tyson saying, everybody's got a plan until you get punched in the face. Right. Well, you'll see it on our huddle film during the season. We'll have defenders go to grab us, and my kids, man, they'll just smack the fire out of them. And that defender will just kind of look at them like, well, you know, they're not used to that. They just kind of stop, and then my kids get open. Yeah. Uh, one, one year when I was coaching middle school, uh, we were running routes and smacking people on and off, and the other coach went to the ref and said, his receivers are smacking my DBs when they try to grab me. And the, <laughs> and the white hat said, you're not allowed to grab the receivers. I don't know what you're complaining about. So, you know, uh, but, you know, you, this is the thing, Coach South, and I know you'll agree with me on this. You, you, what you coach, what you practice is what you coach pretty much. What you allow to happen is what you coach. So if your receivers are saying they're grabbing me, they're grabbing me, that's your fault as a coach. You've got to give them a plan to attack that. I know this. I've coached in the air raid long enough to know that defenders are going to grab us because they don't want us running routes. You know, that, that's called good coaching on a defense. I would do the same thing. I'd say tackle them if I could, you know. But so I've got to give them – my job as a coach is to put my receivers in the best phase to win, okay. And by this little back right here, it teaches my kids how to be nasty. We always get told this as wide receivers. You know, we're prima donnas, right? We're not tough. We're not feeling – well, crap on that. You know what I mean? In order to conquer adversity, you got to create adversity. And that's what we're doing in our drills. I want them to be mentally tough because, you know, I mean, offense – no no offense – you never hear this with offensive linemen, you know, uh, good job for blocking, right? That's their job. That's what they're supposed to do. Just like me as a man, my job is to raise my kids. Nobody tells me good job on that. They shouldn't tell me that. Well, as a wide receiver – Nobody should tell me, hey, you got to get that defender's hands off of it. So I just kind of incorporate that into their mental toughness. And you'll see that that little bat right there will bleed over into competition on seven on seven for one thing. You're going to have a fist fight, which is awesome. And the second thing is it's going to make them tougher when they're protecting that reception area and blocking. The, you will, this changes the entire mentality of a football team is when you see wide receivers blocking for each other. When they get to that level when they're blocking, it creates mental toughness and it creates unity. So you know that's what I tell them, guys. Just just get there and get physical. That's that's perfect. That's the next level right there, buddy. You just helped a bunch of people. Show the. Uh, I know you were the the thing was on again. The hardball chin mm -hmm. on the ball. I think you were demonstrating that over the shoulder. You want to show that while the camera's on you. Absolutely. So if I'm running a route on a go route, me and Coach Salas are real technical sound here, so. We got all kinds of cameras, not really nose my fans. But chin on the ball, what you'll see is a bunch of receivers, when they're running a go route on pack and go, they'll look back at the quarterback and they'll run a go route like this. Well, I've watched track guys and I've never seen any, I've never seen Hussein Bolt or anybody else like that run an entire race looking like this. They look forward, okay? So what I tell them is, is to look up, so the quarterback's back here behind them, look up for the ball, not back, okay? Now the chin on the ball, represents that as I'm looking up, that ball is going to come over the top of me like this. So I need to have my head snap with my chin on the ball. So my head, you want to see him do this on pat and go. The chin on the ball can apply for any drill as well. So if I'm running a stick route as a Y or an H and that quarterback throws the ball over here, I need to put my chin, because my eyes go where my chin goes, I need to put my chin on the ball this way. Okay, because I can keep my head like this and push my eyes, see how my head's looking straight. I, you know, I'm not, I don't have very good vision on there. But if I put my chin on the football, boom, I can catch it. And then the chin also goes into looking it in, right? Because you'll see them, they might have their chin here, and then they go to tuck the football in their head this way, and they get blindsided. All right, and protecting the football is not a priority. I can tell you this, nobody's ever won a football game with 20 turnovers, okay? So – once I catch the football, my chin's on it. My chin's on it all the way to the top. 
Now I need a tight turn. If my chin's on the football, it makes my tight turn easier because all I gotta do is drop that inside shoulder away from the defender and score. Okay, so chin on the football is a very important tool when it comes to wide receiver play. That's awesome, man. Awesome. Great presentation. I can't wait to your uh to your coach two comes out. <clears throat> we'll uh I'm putting this thing up today, but but we'll come go back into the comments uh, once the Coach Tube thing's finished and and put your Coach Tube. You got another Coach Tube out there. Uh, that was a long a, a, a long presentation, wasn't about an hour's worth or maybe a little more. I I sat in on that one, and a lot of those same great points were on it. So uh, I guess we'll we'll try to link that one in uh, to to this one. But you know, super excited about your new courses coming out and. Uh, you know, uh, I, I'm kind of picky about uh, the, the stuff that I that I uh, pay for, but man, if you're an air raid guy, this would be the stuff to pay for because you're you're going through exactly how to run the air raid and and you know just watching this little thing, you gave so many just key points. You know, I was right. I was right. I wrote down a bunch of notes just you know, and it's stuff I've heard. I heard you say in that other that longer one, but it just jumped out at me this time again that uh that stuff we got to incorporate because you just you do it at such a high level man super impressive and thank you so much for being on here and uh and like i said we're gonna we're gonna link that stuff in there so they can get to your coach tube page and uh and i appreciate you man i appreciate you having me brother it's always good talking with you guys you know that you get a hold of me anytime i'll be on here awesome thank you buddy <laughs>